Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. You're welcome to Oil and Farm webinar. Today, we are hosted by Salvis Lapinch, Oil and Farm member of the Management Board. Before we proceed with the presentation, I will shortly introduce you with the agenda. Firstly, Salvis will inform about Oil and Farm latest activities and analyze the financial results of the first quarter 2015 and non-audited financial results of 2015. Right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. We encourage you to ask questions during the presentation by typing them in the questions section on the right side of your screen. All questions will be addressed after the presentation. Please note that during the presentation, Salvis will ask your opinion. Please follow the presentation in screen when poll questions are asked. We encourage you to participate. Salvi. I invite you to proceed with the presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's nice to have you here. Uh, it's nice to see that number of attendees, although it's somewhat smaller than it used to be a few years ago, is, is still decently big. It's also nice to see that uh, many of you are also watching uh, the record of the webinar later on um, in uh, YouTube. Uh, so if you missed something here, please do the same. Go to YouTube later on and, and, and see the record. And now let me start with a short overview of how we've been doing over the last um, few months. So let's start with the fourth quarter. Uh, let's have a quick look at, at the sales. Um, in the fourth quarter alone, we made sales of 25.7 million euros, which is increased by 8% compared to fourth quarter of last year. And you see in the chart that this makes it the best, in terms of sales, the best um, fourth quarter in corporate uh, history so far. And if you look at other, other quarters, you see this is actually the second, overall, second best overall quarter uh, that we ever had. And I'm glad to say that two of the best quarters in our corporate history have really been taking place this year. Pharmacies had uh, 4.7 million in gross sales. And if you do the consolidation correction, they have added 2.3 million to the net sales. Um, Silvanors, the same figures for Silvanors are 1.5 million in net sales, which also has been the best quarter in their corporate history. And 1.3 million of that has been added um, as uh, consolidated sales to the group. Now, uh, if you look at the profit of this quarter, uh, according to unaudited preliminary results, we made a profit of 2.7 million euros. Uh, and, uh, well, because we had reasonably low base last year, if you remember, uh, last year during Q4, uh, we made, we had a very significant uh, forex loss caused by a sharp drop uh, in value of Russian ruble. So if you do the Q4 and Q4 comparison, we see we have grown by more than 2,000%. But again, it's nothing specific about this quarter. It more has, to, has more to do with uh, poor performance because of forex. Uh, in Q4 last year. As far as provisions are concerned, there our net effect of provisions is basically zero because we um, provided roughly 1.1 million euros to the Forex uh, correction that we'll have to do for, for our Ukrainian uh, shipments. And we also reversed 1.1 million euros um, because of um, uh, the provisions that we made uh, because of Russian wholesaler Oriola. Um, we have managed to uh, find a certain settlement with them and actually uh, are starting to receive some uh, payments from them. So we decided to reverse it back. If you look at EBITDA and EBITDA margin, uh, for the first time since we do this chart, and uh, obviously for the first time ever, our EBITDA has exceeded 25 million euros. So this, is, uh, this has been expected because they uh, you know, reasonably bad quarter of uh, fourth quarter of last year is now out of uh, the chart. So, uh, and um, therefore, we, if you remember, during previous webinar, pretty much predicted this this to be happening. Uh, EBITDA margin is approaching 26 percent, and that level is best since 2013. Um, if you look at the countries, this quarter alone, um, there's not much of surprise. Um, during the quarter, there have been 16 different countries in our top 10 list. Um, Russia is still roughly at the level about the third. Uh, Latvia is following somewhere in the area of uh, fourth of our sales. Um, Ukraine has been performing quite nicely during uh, last quarter of last year, and the share 
in sales has increased to 15%. Um, Belarus um, have been complaining a lot about uh, our performance in Belarus. Um, Belarus has become increasingly protectionist and we have felt it heavily uh, in, uh, in uh, Q4 of last year. So Belarus is down to 4% and for those of you who are following us regularly you may remember that in better days Belarus made up up to 10% of our sales. Um, compared to Q3 of last year you don't no longer see Lithuania in uh, Turkmenistan in this pie chart because those got replaced by Switzerland and Tajikistan. Switzerland actually has been performing quite well uh, recently uh, pretty much because of the one, uh, one product that we are now shipping to uh, Switzerland and uh, you will see that uh, a little later. Uh, and if you, if you look at the pie chart for, um, for products for Q4 alone again pretty much um, same picture uh, especially if you look at the uh, best sellers. Um, Nairobi is up to 21%, uh, that's by two percentage points, and the same pretty much applies to uh, PASA. Um, no offense for a mug, for a soul, for a gin and pancreal, they're reasonably stable at their respective levels. Um, one disappointment has been added all. Uh, they have lost about a third of their share, and Edithzin has lost about one fourth of its share. Um, Rematrin is back on top list, and that has to do with uh, that has to do with the uh, season of flu approaching. Uh, and lenalidomide is the product that we are shipping to Switzerland, and that's first time on our top ten uh, product uh, list. So this is a sort of new project, new product that probably will appear in our top ten products uh, from time to uh, for some time uh, to come. Now uh, let me ask Lasma to put the uh, first uh, poll question, and this is uh, quite a usual one, um, which we normally with which we normally start our webinars, and that is where we ask you to, for your opinion, for your assessment of uh, what do you think our uh, Q4 and and the whole 2015 performance has been. Uh, do you think it has been uh, what you expected? Uh, do you think it was maybe a bit better than you expected or, or maybe a bit worse than you expected? So uh, take your um, few seconds uh, to, uh, uh, to mark your answer. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll not move to the next slide. So I'll give you some more, uh, some more seconds to to vote. I think it was uh, it was time enough to do so. So if I may uh, ask you, so thanks for voting. Um, so then now let's move to our next slide. Uh, let's have a look at uh, 2015 in general. You know, yet another record. It's um, almost 98 million euros, uh, and, and this year it was particularly easy to calculate the percentage of the target that we have attained. As we said, 100 million is our target in sales. So we slightly missed that by a little more than 2 million euros. Uh, but still, that makes this a best year in terms of sales in corporate history, uh, as we increased our sales by 4% compared to last year. Um, pharmacies added about 17 million to our gross sales, and about 8.5, roughly half, was uh, added to net sales because of consolidation correction. And these numbers for Sulanors are 4.4 are, are million uh, in uh, with the overall sales and about 3.9 they added to our consolidated sales. Um, for both, uh, for all three of us basically, for oil and farm, for pharmacies and for Sulanors, uh, these are the best numbers ever, so far at least. If you look at profits, according to an audited uh, statements, we have net profit uh, of a group of 14.8 million euros. Uh, increase here is much nicer, it's uh, by 21% uh, compared to last year. Um, it's slightly short of a profit guidance of 50 million that we had for this year, uh, for last year. And of course if you remember the um, profit chart per quarters, 
uh, you will have you will remember that uh, it was helped significantly by great forex gains that we had during Q1. Um, if you remember, we made almost seven million in that quarter alone, so basically almost half of our year's profit, uh, and therefore it might be somewhat um, difficult for us for some years to come to repeat this reasonably good um, profit uh, number. But uh, of course, uh, that's given that the you know, composition of group remains the same. So if you look at the products, um, what have been uh, growing uh, nicer here, uh, or, or not growing. Uh, still, para, I mean, salicylic acid is clearly the one that saves the day. I mean, that has that has added uh, more than 6 million euros to the growth, uh, basically mitigating the sales loss that we had uh, from uh, many other uh, products that have actually been declining, um, including Nulfen, including Formalin Forsol and Adaptol. Um, only five out of 15 top products here have been growing. Uh, also, you see Lenalidomide, the product I mentioned. This also has, of course, appeared on, on top charts here uh, for 15 best-selling products this year. Uh, there are also some other growers by, like Memantine by 154,000, and all the others combined have grown by um, 350,000. Uh, the bigger losers, of course, are um, Adaptol, which lost 1.4 million euros in sales compared to the uh, whole year of 2014. Uh, the, country, the, the, the country picture isn't that bad. I see 10 countries out of 15 growing. Uh, so the following ones are Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, UK, and Poland. Out of these, Russia is almost flat. It's, it, it has declined by just a little more than a percent. If you look at nominal terms, the Netherlands, which, which you know are not really the Netherlands, this is this is WHO or World Health Organization, which is uh, buying uh, paraminosalicylic acid from us. Anyway, we are booking it as the Netherlands. Uh, so they have added 2.9 million euros in sales. Latvia has added 2.3 million. Switzerland, because of lenalidomide, has added 686,000. And all of the markets combined have added 500,000 to our sales. Um, Belarus, in Belarus we lost 1.4 million. In Ukraine, almost a million. And in Russia, 400,000. So uh, basically, since these are the key markets, and the key markets are the key consumers of our big products, the loss in sales of Adaptol and, and other um, well-known products of ours pretty much derives from the sales in, in the countries where these products were uh, quite well established. Uh, and now I think it's it's a time for our uh, second uh, poll question. Um, we have, I have uh, gone through our performance uh, in 2015. Uh, no, uh, giving you some hints of what we have, um, uh, what we have uh, done, and what what is there to expect for uh, from us in the near future. Uh, and so, um, therefore, the question is: uh, Do you expect us in 2016 to grow? Do you expect that our results will actually worsen, or you expect us to be somewhere somewhere in the same? Uh, as, as we uh, demonstrated in 2015. So please um, uh, take a few seconds to answer the question. In the meantime, um, for a number of reasons, not, not least because of my traveling uh, plans, uh, I won't be going, uh, only having any, any particular focus on any issue like I normally do. Uh, as you remember, sometimes I have uh, some extra, sometimes I spend some extra time on uh, on having a look at some of our data companies or some of the markets they're operating or some of the products that we're launching or or, 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 or you know the or that have been launched a while ago and, and are performing one way or another. Uh, this time I'm skipping that uh, for uh, time saving reasons and also for the reason that there have been quite a lot of events recently happening to the company that I felt probably need a little more attention or fine than, uh, than I usually pay to recent events. Um, thanks for watching. Now let's let's look at what has been happening uh, um, recently. Uh, yet another management change. Um, as, as, as you noticed uh, late last year, 
uh, uh, the council appointed Ms. Mariana Ivanovic-Seva uh, to the position of uh, member of the board. Uh, she was with us uh, only about three months and uh, earlier in February uh, the, uh, by mutual agreement. Um, uh, the uh, well, relationship were, were uh, terminated uh, with Ms. Ivanovic-Seva. Uh, instead, Mr. Oleg Grigoryevs was appointed to be the new board member of, of our company. Mr. Grigoryevs has been with the company uh, pretty much since like uh, late 90s, almost almost right after the privatization. And the most of the times he was the person responsible for commercial activities of the company. Uh, and for the for, uh, last five or six years he's been occupying the position of company's commercial uh, director. Um, so, uh, wish him good luck and uh, certainly a very, very experienced person uh, when it comes to pharmaceutical sales. Also, one of the recent events that we have, um, that has happened to us uh, is that we have acquired a company called Kiwi Cosmetics uh, and uh, that company is a producer of uh, Eco Cosmetics and you see here in the picture uh, some of the products that they produce and sell. The company's sales were only to 123,000 euros last year, so um, I'm not allowed to uh, disclose the, the price of transaction at this point in time, but as you can imagine, judging by the sales volumes, that, that, that price isn't even close to uh, what would require our special, uh, special reporting. Um, although the, the sales are small, the company has more than 70 um, names in their portfolio, 70 different uh, uh, products. Uh, most of them are certified according to what's called EcoCert, which is the most recognized international uh, certification system for sort of ecological uh, products. The company has already made a presence uh, in terms of sales in 20 different countries, uh, mostly in Europe, uh, and we see very many synergies between Kiwi Cosmetics and, and, and many other parts of our group, not least Silenos being also the green pharma company, so a lot of, lot of uh, production synergies with them. Uh, of course, uh, we also see a lot of potential synergies between Kiwi and uh, our pharmacy chain. Because uh, once you put some sort of health claim, which we intend to do, uh, on their products, then pharmacies, of course, is uh, one of the uh, good channels of uh, distribution of these products. And of course, we also see a lot of potential uh, potential in uh, cooperation between Kiwi and One Farm itself when it comes to uh, the export markets. It's just um, just a few months uh, since we acquired the company. But already uh, several contracts are uh, under negotiation. So, uh, and uh, since the the base number of 123,000 euros is reasonably small, in terms of percentages, we do expect a, a very very significant sales growth of the company as a matter of the next few years to come. Uh, awards? Yes, it's uh, no quarter without awards. Uh, this quarter been only two of, two of them. Uh, and one of them is not really an award, it's more uh, recognition. Um, we are glad to announce that we were awarded a special award by Nasdaq Botec as the top performance in 10 years uh, um, combination of investor relations and shared performance. Uh, and they also have been voted ninth most attractive employer in Latvia. Um, so very glad to uh, uh, to receive these uh, these, these uh, awards and uh, of course trying to uh, give us a certain responsibility in, in both uh, both issues uh, both in terms of investor relations and uh, also in terms of what a social dialogue we have with our uh, you know, existing uh, employees and our future employees um, yes yeah, standalone numbers or unconsolidated numbers. Uh, preliminarily, uh, parent company made a sales of 85 million, which is 98% uh, of the target, which was 87 million uh, euros. And according to preliminary numbers, 
the profit of parent company is slightly above 40 million euros or slightly above 100% of the target, target being 40 million. So uh, why am I uh, saying this is because of the next slide. And this is kind of question that I've been asked quite quite frequently over the last um, number of months is, is what is about to happen to dividends, because dividends are calculated, of course, from the profit of a parent company. Now, the current uh, sentiment or the mood of, of the boards really is to stick to previously made prom uh, promises. And for the prof from profits of 2015, uh, pay dividends with previously promised uh, payout ratio of 17.5%. Uh, um, also, the sentiment is that uh, th there is no intention at the moment to have any sort of dividend holidays in coming years, meaning that we do intend uh, to keep paying dividends for next few years to come. Um, at the same time, since company is increasingly uh, active and, and spends increasing amount of resources on identifying acquisition targets, and several of them have been identified and are in uh, are being processed, so to speak. Uh, one of the proposals, and that really is just one of the proposals, is to freeze the payout ratio, let's say, at a level of 15% for next three years. Um, so, uh, in short, what I'm trying to say in this slide, that yes, guys, we do plan uh, to pay, pay dividends for 2015 and keep paying dividends for next years to come. But since we have uh, quite an ambitious um, agenda regarding acquisitions, we might somewhat discontinue the gradual increase by 2.5% as we initially planned. But uh, at the same time, not we'll, we'll do not intend to have any dividend holidays. So in other words, for the next three years, uh, the current mode of the board is to pay a dividend of, of a level of about 15%. Um, I hope you regard this more as a good news than a bad news, but uh, let me ask you the question. So uh, what's your opinion? I mean, you see that uh, organic growth, we're not doing that well as we used to do a few, used to do a few years ago. So we are increasingly talking about acquisitions and the inorganic growth. So um, you being uh, shareholders, being investors, uh, what is that you would like more? You, would you like us to pay as, as much dividend as, as, as possible? Uh, do you think that we should freeze dividends for whatever number of years just to provide growth, uh, including growth via acquisitions? Or do you think the right answer is somewhere in the middle? that we should uh, have some level of dividend payment and still um, try to uh, grow uh, through acquisitions. Uh, please take your time. And I'll take you a few more seconds um, to vote, because uh, that also will certainly play uh, some sort of role when we define further approach. Uh, again, let me emphasize that this is in no way a, a done deal. This is as I just said, this is dividend debate. This is uh, I'm pretty much con you know, conveying you the the conveying you the the, the, mode, the considerations that have showed up in different different board uh, discussions, and council discussions, and management discussions. So thanks for voting. Uh, now uh, now we're back to the presentation, the second scene in the, in the small window here. Yeah, um, among other things that have happened recently, Trust the Commerce Bank, uh, its license has been revoked. Uh, at the time, uh, we had about 150,000 euros on our accounts with that bank. Um, and uh, we are, of course, some of them were in transit at that time, so we're trying to withdraw them. Uh, but what's probably more uh, important is that TKB, Trust the Commerce Bank, was also providing a factory for our Ukrainian sales. Uh, the fact is that our, our um, uh, factoring payments were never actually collected up front uh, because the cost um, because the cost of, uh, uh, of 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 that was reasonably high and given reasonably high uh, cash in, uh, uh, cash in our accounts uh, that made financially no sense, but it was more as a security. Um, you know, to a risk of eventual non-payment. 
Uh, however, experience shows that uh, Ukrainian partners have been perfectly able not only to service uh, the current payments, but also to reduce the debt. And if you remember uh, back from 2012 to 2013, we made some significant overshipments to Ukraine. And uh, shortly after that, all the Ukrainian issues started. And, uh, and uh, we were left with reasonably high receivables from Ukraine. As I remember at the peak, they were even bigger than 13 million. Now they are somewhere in area of 9 million. So they, they are perfectly able uh, to, to serve it, to service it and to um, uh, reduce the outstanding debt. But uh, cause, because of, uh, of, of um, the poor economic performance of the country, and not necessarily the, the, the most stable currency in the world. Uh, of course, we have certain certain uh, certain doubts, certain worries about uh, Ukrainian receivables, and so do our auditors. And therefore, having someone to sort of guarantee it was nice. Um, so um, that's no longer possible with TKB or just Commerce Bank, and now we're trying to uh, agree with some other providers of factoring schemes. Uh, that would provide us with with, uh, with similar uh, feeling of security uh, for the future. And uh, um, last and probably not least, and probably not also not the most serious thing, uh, one of the questions that uh, been asked over last uh, week uh, was uh, many questions that was asked during last week were in one way or another way related to a product called Madonium. Uh, and uh, you know, a number of speculations how probably our sales are going to skyrocket and the whole world is going to eat the product and things like that. I decided that it probably would be good to make a, a clear point, a clear statement about this from our side. Uh, and um, our belief is, I don't, do not really have any statistics to prove that, but our firm belief is that vast majority of patients using Meldonium that we produce uh, use it for reasons of related more to the treatment and less uh, with or no, uh, not related to their uh, desires for athletic uh, performance. Um, however, there still, of course, might be some smaller segment of our users, of users of the product that, that use this for purposes other than, than, than recovery from medical conditions. Uh, but we believe that that segment is reasonably small, and even if the current uh, noise related to the product might encourage that segment to grow, uh, since we believe it's reasonably small, we do not expect that the, 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 the current um, uh, meldonium awareness will lead to any significant increase either in sales of that product or will cause significant increase of company sales in general. So that's, uh, that's about it. And um, we made it in uh, half an hour. And as usual, I would be very glad to hear questions now. Last one. Salvi, thank you for the presentation. Yes, now I will proceed with the questions in the order they were received. But before, I would like to remind you that you can still send in your questions in the section on the right side of your screen. There is one question that we received uh, via email, and uh, I believe some of you mentioned uh, quite a lot, but still I will read it out loud. Can you please provide more information about Oland Farm's product, Meldenium Oland Farm, considering the recent information about Greendex product, Mildrenats? Have you also experienced an increase for Meldonium Oland Farm product, as well as for other Meldonium products? products produced by Wallen Farm. If yes, how big is the increase in percentages? Uh, Salve, is there anything you would like to add in addition to what you mentioned before? Uh, thank you, Lasma. Um, yeah, let me just clarify things. I mean, uh, I might not be fully aware of all the increases because story really is weak old only. And even if there is an excessive demand out there, it will first of all hit the pharmacies then pharmacies would talk to the wholesalers and then wholesalers would have an extra order and uh, even if that is actually happening as we speak I'm afraid that it will should take a lot more time than, than a week <laughs> excuse me so uh, 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 again uh, I believe that uh, we do not expect any hyper demand for the product 
uh, B, even if there is an increased demand, it's it's too early to judge. Asma? Salve, thank you for an answer. Uh, currently, there are no questions sent in, but maybe uh, we can wait a bit. Maybe somebody is uh, typing in a question. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, you can do it on the right side of the screen in, in section. Uh, no, it's, um, let's take some minutes. Obviously, the presentation was um, quite comprehensive, self-explanatory, or maybe it wasn't. How about dividends? Maybe you have questions about dividends. That's uh, everybody wants to talk about dividends. Yes, there is no? one. Uh, Salvi, there is yeah. one question. Please update on most recent rub sales FX rate. Um, yes, um, I guess I um, I know what, what 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 you mean. It's it, it's probably the FX rate that we apply to uh, our price list that that we use in our Russian trading, and the current FX rate for Q1 is 92 uh, rubles per euro. So uh, again, uh, that will uh, most likely lead to uh, inflated sales to Russia. And since ruble is behaving more or less okay, that might also lead to um, you know, uh, forex gains. But again, that's, that's probably too early to judge. Asma? Salve, thank you for an answer. There are two more questions. I will start with the first one. How would you explain the 18% uh, I assume it's here, and uh, sales drop for Sylvanos uh, in January. I would explain it uh, purely by the fact that they had had great sales in both November, well, even October, November, and December. They had the most like average of slightly more than half a million per month, which is just huge sales for Sylvanos. Now, uh, yeah, so. My explanation is that system probably was quite full, uh, and and uh, yeah, they, they they probably did some extra shipments later uh, at the end of the year, uh, and uh, I wouldn't uh, really um, make a great story out of it if, if February and March are back on track. Is February back on track? We will actually see hopefully um, maybe tomorrow morning. I'm talking about our monthly sales figures. Sorry, thank you for an answer. And one more question that has been sent in. Please update on status of shareholder loans and whether dividend announcement will reduce or change it. Yeah, there, there are still some shareholders loans outstanding. Um, dividend announcement uh, will clearly uh, reduce it. Uh, there has been some corrections uh, appearing to it uh, quite quite recently, and some some um, some improvements are expected uh, if and when dividends are actually paid. And uh, along with that, we do expect some some other uh, uh, recovery, uh, cash recovery. So not only will dividends uh, cover it, but but some other extra payments. Um, so we are. Um, it's not the nicest thing to have, of course, and and, and this question um, keeps reappearing pretty much every webinar. But, but it seems to me that that the the solution at the moment is 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 starting in a good direction in this sense. Last one. Salve, thank you. I will proceed with the questions. What is your opinion on increasing companies' capital from the profit and giving the shares to current shareholders instead of paying dividends? Well, that, that, that's an interesting idea. To be absolutely honest with you, we haven't really looked at this option. Uh, and uh, but maybe maybe it is worth pursuing. Maybe it is worth pursuing. Um, why we have been reasonably, um, let's say, uh, why we haven't been really pursuing this before is that in most of debates it's it's dividends that we have been thinking about and shareholders have been asking for and uh, and so on but yeah let, let me well let, let us start the debate internally uh, before before I can answer this question fully thank you Masma 
Thank you, Salvi. Two more questions to come. When Export to Turkey could start? Yeah, so uh, the export to Turkey, as, as, as I've been saying, we do expect the first registrations, if everything goes smoothly, we do expect the first registrations of our product in Turkey at the end of this year, meaning, let's say, November, for instance. If that happens, that means that this year we would only probably ship some samples. Um, most likely, more decent exports, if everything goes according to plan, would start next year. But then again, next year would be our first year of operating in Turkey. So uh, technically, we would start probably export next year, but those would be reasonably small. Uh, in order for a country the size of Turkey to become a meaningful player in our all export markets, uh, let's say, uh, before Turkey shows up on our top 10 country lists, I think it should take, could take up to about three years, maybe in four. Last one. Salve, thank you. And uh, the last question is regarding uh, PASA. I believe you mentioned it in the presentation, but apparently a person missed this information. Um, what sales for PASA are budgeted for 2016 and increase comparing to 2015? How many years do you expect the growth for this product? We are still tentatively planning a slight growth uh, of that product because we believe we are close to the maximum levels of that product for WHO, uh, but that's for WHO. Uh, we are also, um, since the product has become reasonably well known, uh, we are also talking to, via WHO, to the governments of, of some nations uh, that are, some of them are, for some of them, support of WHO is discontinuing, but they know the, the product. Um, so they'll be happy to import them on their own without involvement of the WHO. Uh, so we expect that uh, we might have a couple more years with slight increase in sales of that product, but uh, but nothing as dramatic as we have seen in 2014 or 2015. Asma. Salve, thank you. One more question. In terms of acquisitions, are you mostly looking at smaller size add-ons or would also potentially consider bigger scale acquisitions? Uh, yeah, let me, well, that, that depends on what you, what you, what the definition of big and small. Uh, yeah, well, Kiwi, of course, is a, is a, is a tiny liquid acquisition and uh, all the other things that we are having a look at at the moment are uh, numbers of times bigger um, than, than Kiwi is. But then again, if, if you look at our size, and we're talking about roughly 100 million uh, market cap, um, nothing is as big as that. Let's say the, the, the targets that we currently are talking about are somewhere in the area of, uh, of let's say, 50 million euros. Um, and uh, that's a bigger one. Others, others are smaller. Asma? Salve, thank you for an answer as given. Uh, all questions are answered by now. Uh, I remind you that you can contact Salvis after the webinar about any questions you may have on contacts presented on screen currently. Record of the presentation will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel, webinar playlist, and investors portal nodes.lv. Salvi, thank you for your presentation and for answers given. Participants, thank you for joining. Uh, thanks for joining and uh, see you in uh, one quarter, uh, if not sooner. Maybe there will be some good news that uh, we want to have a uh, webinar on. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining again and um, yeah, um, keep following us. Thank you.